What is shaking, everybody? It is Mark Cordon, the Golden Mike episode 10. We made it through 10 episodes of this thing. Can you believe it, Crisis? Have you seen any of them? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, we have Human Missile Crisis, uh, the creative loafing Atlanta um, athlete of all the sports in Atlanta, athlete of the year last year, an Atlanta roller girl, a uh, human missile crisis, who is here that uh, here to talk about the elements of a positive mindset, right? And uh, did you pick those elements up? Like, Derby, where did you pick those things up? Uh, I think a little bit of everywhere. Derby is a huge part of it. Uh, my dad is definitely known for being a super positive and optimistic guy. So I know that, you know, that's part of it. My, my parents are both. Um, yeah, just I've gotten the opportunity to work with a lot of people with like a really positive mindset and taken little tidbits here and there, I think. Right on. Um, so just in case y'all haven't met me before we go into the tips, um, my name is Mark Cordone. I am a positive psychology coach. So mindset work is I'm looking forward to learning about the mindset work that, that you do, uh, crisis, um, crisis. You also know me as Manila ice, um, <laughs> Manny, uh, for short. Um, so if you're feeling good and functioning well, I'm trying to replicate that with more people through my coaching. Uh, so crisis, are you feeling good today? It's so good. Right. How are you feeling? <laughs> are you are you functioning well? I, I would like to think that I'm functioning well, yes. Right on, right. We would all like to think that, right? Um, and I think with mindset work that we can, we can get there, right? So if y'all are feeling good and functioning well on this Friday, give me a big old heart. Can you give me a heart? Um, if, if you're feeling okay and doing okay, it's, it, it, it's been one of those weeks because I know uh, there's been blizzards and there's been some flus that have been going around. I think there's some weird boil water thing that's going on in Atlanta right now. Yeah. Um, oh, so you got to boil your water? Okay, so there's some boil water thing going in Atlanta. That does have a, a, an effect on our energy. So it's okay to feel okay and just be getting by for now, right? So give me a thumbs up if you're feeling that. And also at the same time, if you're hopeful, if you're hopeful about the weekend, if you're hopeful about the future, give me a big old uh, wow face. Give me a wow face. Nick, uh, uh, a crisis, can you give me a wow face? Oh my God, that's so freaking scary, dude. It's like a demented wow face. Oh, that's a good wow face. Okay, so give us a wow face. Um, so I'm just going to start off with a broad question. Crisis, what's your story? Oh, gosh. I uh, I am from Atlanta. Um, I'm like part of Atlanta and then moved out into Marietta when I was like pretty young. Um, and then I skate with the Atlanta Roller Girls. I'm applying to grad school right now. Um, I do a lot of like tiny like projects on the side. Um, and I'm just like really excited to be here. I'm just usually <laughs> to be anywhere. I'm excited about most things. So, uh, if anyone has been to an Atlanta Roller Girl, um, uh, either a block party or a bout, uh, Nikita usually is the loudest voice, uh, either in the stands, in front of the crowd, leading cheers. It's 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 pretty amazing. So let's talk about this, like. So you grew up in Atlanta. What is it that gets you on skates and like gets you to play derby? W where does that come from? Well, I mean, I love it. Obviously, like I'm, I'm in love with it. Uh, my dad bought me Whip It as a Valentine's Day gift back when I was like 17 because I was like super. In Ellen, I'm still in Ellen Page. Like she's my my girl crush. Okay. And, um. I, as soon as I finished watching it, I was like, guys, I, I got to do this. <laughs> um, and you had to be 21 with Atlanta Roller Girls at the time. So I had to wait until I turned 18 and moved to Athens for school. Uh, okay. I skated with CCRG for five years, four or five years. CCRG is classic city roller girls. Okay. Uh, the Athens team out there. Okay. Um, and yeah. So I, when I moved here, it just made sense to, I mean, that I would, why would I stop? 
<laughs> so yeah. so what was it about what was it about like the whip it movie that got you so inspired to to take on to to put on the pads the helmet the mouth guard the skates what what got what was it about that movie um i think it was there's a lot of pieces to it i think that that there's a lot of pieces to why i love roller derby the the community is so inclusive it's um like the the camaraderie and the sisterhood i think is different from any anything else you'd find it's you know what i mean what uh, it is kind of a, a sorority of sorts, and I think it's the the ideal sorority. You know what I mean? Um, okay. And like all of, I say sisterhood, but even the volunteers and everybody involved, like it is for everyone. Um, yeah. And like the glitz and the glamour, like the 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 glitter and like the hot pants and like I know <laughs> that's not huge for everybody, but it's like it's part of it for me. I, every element of it. Okay. And I love contact sports, so you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So there's definitely contact in that. So um, talk to us, for those of us who don't know what roller derby is, like what is it about? Because, I mean, I definitely remember, um, I remember like being a kid and watching it on Saturdays on TV, Mm -hmm. and it came on after professional wrestling. And so I was like, oh, yeah, it's like professional wrestling on skates. Like, like. Is it still the same sport or like what, what is roller derby today? Oh man, it's totally different. I mean, okay. it, yeah, like what, what you're saying when it was on TV, it was pretty much wrestling. It was scripted yeah. and bruisers coming after Susie Hot Rod. She stole her man, you know, but like these days it is a, a professional and athletic sport played on a flat track. I always say that it's like a combination of rugby and NASCAR uh, with one girl as the ball. So you have a human ball. <laughs> yeah, and she's the only one who can score points. She scores one for every blocker she passes. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it's a game unlike anything else. And let me guess, when you saw Whip It, you wanted to be that human ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I wanted to be the camera all the way from the start. <laughs> okay, so so let's talk about this. When you When you first got on skates... What was that experience like? Because it is one thing to see it on the movies, and then it's another thing to um, be in the actual. I, I I don't know where you first started skating, but um, you know, uh, a lot of skate rinks around Georgia are, you know, they're they're um, somewhat homely. Uh, some of the floor isn't the best. Um, some of them are hot, <laughs> straight up. Like, what what was it like to put on your on those skates for the first time and take those first strides i think i was undeterred from from the get-go i it, i think there was literally nothing that could deter me from playing roller derby i was so impassioned by the idea uh, okay. i was up at the rink and had been 18 for a month and in my head i was like yeah i'll just like master skating in a month with sheer determination <laughs> and like perseverance and then i got on skates and realized that that timeline may have to move a little bit um, I was a hot mess when I got on wheels. I couldn't, you know what I mean? I couldn't even stop. It took me so long to learn how to skate. Um, they actually used me as an example for why it's okay to like flounder for so long before you like get your skate legs. Um, cause I didn't bout for a year and a half. Okay. So um, bout is that actually skating in the game? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I so, was- So 18 months was straight up training. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't take that long for everyone. In fact, it doesn't take that long for most people. But um, okay, I was, you know, exceptionally slow to it, and I let you know what I mean. I didn't mind. It was just about getting the fundamentals and sure, sure. So wh- there was <laughs> never a point where you you had an injury, or there was a never point where you fell so many times that you were just like, "Fuck this, dude." <laughs> like, like, have, like, I don't know, like, did you ever throw your helmet or anything like that? Or was it always a positive attitude that you had? No, I don't mean to misrepresent it. I think okay. the steps where, you know, like, again, you say 18 months, it was a really long time. So I think there were some points where I felt um, like maybe I wasn't cut out for it or like maybe I didn't have the muscles for it. Maybe I just didn't have the body for it. You know what I mean? Like, um, but 
I think for me, it was about finding the things to like tell myself or talk to myself through, you know what I mean? How to talk yourself through it Mm -hmm. um, and how to see positives in the places you were at. Like every assessment you failed, like what did you do better? What did you, um, what did you address differently? What can you take into the next assessment? Okay. So uh, I guess definitely what I'm hearing there was, um, it, this is a positive psychology concept. It, it, it's uh, having a, a growth feedback loop in no matter what you do, you always are looking for, for continuous improvement. Um, what was your fear levels at times? Because I know there's excitement there. What about fear? Cause I know when I got on, on my skates the first time I was stone cold shit scared. Like was there ever a time when you were super scared? Um, for me, it wasn't about skating because I liked, um, I'm first of all, I'm low to the ground, you know, so like falling and stuff like that, I didn't have fear for it. For me, it was about letting the team down or not being, you know what I mean? Proving people right if they thought I wasn't good enough. Mm. That's a whole other type of fear. Yeah. So that was, I was, you know what I mean? That was my level of fear, not necessarily the physical part of it because I liked the challenge and I liked the idea of not being good at something so that you get a chance to work at it until you're good at it. Uh, right, on, right on. So, okay. So you're in the Atlanta. I know you hate it when I say this, which is why I'm going to say it. I'm not even going to look at the camera because I know you're going to roll your eyes at me. So you were the creative loafing athlete of the year in 2017. Oh, you, didn't roll, you did roll your eyes kind of like, <laughs> do you like, what does fear look like today for you? Because you've been recognized as an elite athlete in our community. Uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of qualified, uh, maybe more qualified athletes for that title, which is why I roll my eyes. So I don't, I, I do it with affection. Okay. Uh, for now, fear looks like maybe not having deserved where I'm at and finding out that maybe I'm not the skater that I thought I was or that other skaters think that I am. Um, but I think everybody really has that fear. And I think, it's a, it is about keeping perspective of those fears. And if you aren't the skater, then what are you doing to become the skater? Uh, oh, I love that. I love that. And I think the translation goes really well for skaters and non-skaters. You know, when I think about my, my, my coaching practice, I think about that same thing. Like, what if I'm not the coach that I, I portray myself as? Now, how do you get through that? How do you get through that sort of... Um, I don't know if that's imposter syndrome, but like, how do you get through that phase where you're like, what if I'm not? And then you get the, like, what do you do with that? I think it's kind of like preparing for a test. I mean, okay. you have the same fear as when, what if I don't know this? What if I am not, you know what I mean? What if I'm not prepared or like informed enough to be <clears throat> or to perform or succeed in a way that others expect me to. And you, you prepare for anything and you like, tests any assessments by doing those things over until you are or like preparing your muscles differently from a different angle so that you can't you know what I mean yeah like performing off skates in order to be more successful on the track you do the things that you need to do in order to feel prepared and yeah. then you know first you will be prepared but secondly you'll think that you're more prepared and I think that's maybe more crucial so that that sounds like total mindset work right there that preparedness, that approach to things. Um, and even when that little gremlin starts creeping up, you still push through and, and have that mindset, right? Um, so today's piece is about, uh, well, actually, before I even go into that, human missile crisis. Where did this come from? <laughs> um, I was in a like a public school for high school, but it was a magnet school. Um, so in the program, you're talking about my name origins, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the program, the history like courses that we were taking, they picked one era of history to focus on for a year, and it was Cold War era uh, is what our, our my professor picked. And so, like, we had to study domestic and foreign policy from like 1901 until like 1980, 1990. <laughs> um, so, any Cold War humor to me is like hilarious. So, just... you're such a nerd. <laughs> So that's where that, yeah, I mean. Okay, so so from, from being around the Derby community, like how do Derby players actually 
get their names. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like their careers, the like puns they find like genuinely funny. Yeah. And- Hilarious too is that we find we as roller girls find things differently funny than our friends do. So I would take names to my friends and be like, "Isn't this funny?" And they'd be like, "Nikita, that's that's dumb. That's pretty lame." <laughs> and then bring it to the roller girls, and they'd all be like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant!" <laughs> the ultimate sorority. <laughs> I feel like we all really appreciate vagina puns, but like nobody's willing to take them. <laughs> We're going there. So let, let's let's do this. Uh, give me some of the best roller derby names that that you've seen out there. Um, I think Hella Blitz Gerald is still one of my absolute favorites. Hella Blitz Gerald. Yeah. Uh, there's, I mean, there's so many good ones. Like my boyfriend is Braun F. Kennedy. Um, I've been trying to get somebody to take Thunder Snatch for years, uh, and nobody, nobody. So it's still available if anybody's out there looking for a derby name. So, so what do you what do you mean it's still available? Like, do do we have to copyright those names? Do we have to go to the patent office and well, is is there a roller derby office? <laughs> uh, there used to be a list on twoevils dot org where they'd list them off, and you'd have to like apply for the name, and if somebody else had it, you had to contact them and make sure that they were okay with you know what I mean with you taking a, a similar name. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, now I do have to tell you when I um, when I went through my transformation of being Mark Cordone to becoming Manila Ice, right? Um, I actually had to go and I went to that registry, and there is a Manila Ice in Minnesota, um, mm-hmm. skating. And I, I, out of deference, I went to her and said, "Look, I am this poser kid in Atlanta, and." I, I've already kind of owned the name. I didn't know that we had to go to this like site. And she was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she's like, cool. And then like every time she kind of comes around the region, she's like, Hey Manny, you want to do a family shot with the other men, Manila ice? Like it is when you talk about the community value, like it is amazing. And even the fans, even the fans, like I remember the first day I walked in, I was like, what is going on? And there were these two fans in there that were like, you've never been here before. Take a beer. Let's tell you about the bout. Let's yeah. tell you about the game. And it was just like family. And that to me is one of the coolest things about anything. Anytime you can go and you can connect with folks and you can be yourself that's amazing. So I, I need to throw this out for all the folks who are watching right now. If you uh, are a derby skater, if you're fresh meat, if you're in, uh, aspiring to be a derby skater, um, or if you want to, uh, if you want to explore a derby name, now is the time to throw it out. Uh, this is Human Missile Crisis. I'm Manila Ice. Um, uh, <laughs> Thunder Snatch is still available for anyone who wants to claim it. Um, any other ones that we could possibly throw out for, for people to claim? Missile, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and anything, uh, anything no, other names? I was like, I don't, there's like, <laughs> um, I can't think of any off the fly, but I know like we all keep lists so we can like message each other and say, Oh guys, I've got it. This is the best one we've come up with so far. <laughs> so do people ever go through name changes? Or, like uh, once you, once you get your name, it's, it's there. It's happened, but I think it's hard for other people to take you as another name. Um, uh, and you yeah. always come up with a better name once you choose yours. Always. That's true. That is true. That is true. So if you're watching the replay, make sure you come up with the name. Uh, it's it's just a fun thing to do. Uh, I wish I would have claimed the Thunder Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the mindset work. Let's talk about the mindset work. Yeah. Um. So you definitely had your ups and downs and all arounds when it came to um, derby work and the 18 months that you had before your first bout it definitely makes sense for all of us who are either starting a business. Those of us who are going through school right now, um, those of us who are in the long haul and have an end goal, or those of us who are looking to be 
an elite performer at whatever it is that we do to have that positive mindset. So for you, what would you say are the keys to positive mindset? Um, okay. So the, the first one is that while you are working on the things that you need to work on, um, let's say it's a footwork drill or some particular move, um, you are building the muscles to be successful at that thing. So those are the same muscles. I think in the same, any, anything that you're aspiring to or that you're working towards is if, even if you're failing at doing the thing, you are working on the skills to be able to do the thing that you you're trying to do. Um, and I think keeping that in perspective and realizing that you are progressing, even if it doesn't feel like it at that moment. Um, yeah. How does that yeah. sound? Much more concise way to say what I was trying to say. No, not at all. That's what you're saying. I'm just typing it in. Um, but yeah, and I, I think keeping perspective of that is huge. It's a huge part of it. And and what an what an awesome what an awesome way to um to have that mindset because almost in everything that we do, there is an assessment on life, right? So like there's assessments in Derby for safety. There's assessments in coaching to make sure that you're you're abiding by the right ethics. And um, there are GREs that we take. And sometimes we fall short of what our expectations for performance are. But you're still moving forward. It looks like there's a person named Papa Crisis that wants to say, wow, what an awesome episode. I think it's an awesome episode as well. Papa, I hope you're well, brother. Um, and shout out to the men of the Atlanta men's roller derby team. Um, those guys are on the up and up. Look for the purple and gold. Um, so what else do we got going on? You're working your muscle as long as you're pushing it, even if you feel like you're failing. Yeah. Okay, um, that's awesome. The second one is maybe um, assessing where your frustrations are coming from. If you feel like you're hitting a wall every time looking back and trying to see the points that are actually driving the issue and then trying to keep a solution in mind. So instead of saying, I'm hitting a wall, I can't do this, come back to it and try and pinpoint the things that are specific to the problem. Like I was having trouble writing my MBA essay and I, uh, I just, I kept like sitting there with a paragraph and just, you know what I mean? Struggling. And I was like, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I'm not good at it. Maybe I'm not cut out for this or passionate about it. Um, and I think it was saying, no, I actually realized that the, the thing that I'm missing is the research behind what exactly an MBA is focused for in the, you know what I mean? I could explain it in a paragraph, but beyond that, and I think it was finding the resources that I needed, um, like saying, oh, I, well, I, I have social worker friends who work in this field and who know of an MBA or could even give me like maybe a five minute spiel that would give me phrases to pull from so I can do my own research. You know, it's um, do the work, but like keep trying to pinpoint specific things that you can work on to come back to that main thing that you're trying to work through that that huge hairy goal. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. One of the really the the what I love about the way that you articulated that crisis was when you use the word frustration, right? The source of your frustration will often come from here. It's an emotion. It's a feeling, right? And if we become overcome with the feeling sometimes, that's when anxiety can take over. That's where we could stop doing what we're doing. Um, or that's when that gremlin on our mind can totally get loud and stop us, you know? But if we feel that there's something that's frustrating, then we can move to like what you did. What is a solution? Let me think through this. Or yeah. let me move down into my gut. What is my gut telling me? So it's not just the frustration that's there, but you also have two other problem solvers, your gut, uh, your intuition, and your mind. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. And okay. I mean, it applies to everything. Like if I'm totally. not feeling successful at practice, then the solution mine is to address like, well, are my quads giving out? Am I, is my lateral work not effective? What can I do separately from this to bring it back? Um, Absolutely. That, that is super awesome. So remember that comes back to a positive mindset. And I would also say that the result of a positive mindset from these two things is inevitable growth. Yeah. Okay. So what else do we got going on? Um, the last one I think is a little simple, but for me, it was a huge point. Um, I think we get into 
the huge goals that we want, or at least I do, and I'm speaking, you know what I mean? Um, I get into a, a point where you have these huge goals that you're working towards, and if there's any roadblocks on the way, it feels like those things are keeping you from doing what you want to do, and it feels uh, easy to feel put upon. Like, I can't do this because of these things that are happening. Um, and I think, for, for me, what's really effective is um, deciding what it's worth to me uh, and and keeping the element of choice there. You know, like I have decided to do this thing and working around these things or working the grind or working through all of the, the long nights, the studio like days, all of the, the pieces to it is an element of choice. Uh, and it's something that I am doing because I, I am getting to do this thing that is toward what I want to do in my life. And I think the element of choice and, and the autonomy there is huge. I mean, there are studies about it. Like there are hundreds of studies about the element of choice. Um, Absolutely. I, I can't be, oh my gosh, goosey bumpy right now. The element of choice is such a big deal. Getting out of bed every day and feeling like you have to do something versus feeling like you choose to do something is a complete difference maker. Yeah, Because like having to do something implies that you're at the mercy of uh, the world, the universe, um, whatever region of the country that you're in. And choosing to do something really comes from an internal place and something that I would say about you, a place of passion, yeah. you know. And, and so um, – Definitely. Uh, you know, I can definitely relate to when I was in my PhD program and I was like, man, I'm this far away from becoming Dr. Manila Ice. Right. And um, and there was a choice that I made and I was like, it's not to be called doctor and to go through this much more work is not worth it anymore. I've got all the knowledge and yeah. I think I can start a business on it. So I love how you, how you framed it like that. Choose what it's worth to you. So how does this, how does this come together in terms of, and I'm, I'm assuming because you put in so much work to roller, roller derby players for roller derby. Don't just, I think they call it a, a lifestyle. It's a, a lifestyle. They put in that much work. Um, but for folks in, and out of roller derby, how would you say that these three elements of the mindset um, uh, uh, find the source of, of your fr frustration and stay solution focused? Um, uh, what was the second one? I forgot what the second one was. The first one. I think the, the um, if you're failing, you're still growing. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's always growth, regardless of whether you're you're failing or succeeding. Succeeding is a total illusion, right? And um, and then the 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 third piece um, being the choice. How do you see that applying to the folks around you who are in and out of Derby? I mean, I think it applies to everything, and I think really it's just simple reminders of things we know, but that we forget when we're in the moment and when we're in the middle of a pack or when we're in the middle of a meeting that we don't feel prepared for. You know what I mean? Like, I think any any journey towards a difficult goal, you can use these mindsets. Um, and I think it's something that we all forget and something that we all need to remind each other of. Okay. You, you almost said it all human missile crisis. Um, I want to ask you right now, um, roller derby is obviously a big deal. And like, where can we see you? Where can we see you doing your thing? Um, Oh, so our next game is March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so if you want to come see a game. Oh, Lordy. Winners, oh, Lordy. Ooh, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. That's where you should go for tickets and for um, the best time of your life. Now, are you going to be skating that night? I am not going to be skating. Okay. Uh, but I will be cheerleading. And, and um, yeah, it's BYOB. Please come. Like, enjoy yourself. Uh, yes. Yes, and definitely ask, ask, ask her questions because she is one of the best, like, people to break down the sport. And also you can see that she takes those metaphors. Like, when we talk, we always talk in derby metaphors, but we're talking about non-derby things. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, make sure you introduce yourself 
to human missile crisis. Um, who is bouting that night? Uh, we have a Jukes game and a Rumble Vs game. So it's going to be uh, a pretty packed house. I'm super psyched. Okay, so who are the Jukes and the Rumble Bees in, in terms of how they relate to, to the Atlanta Roller Girls? So uh, Atlanta Roller Girls is made up of four home teams. Okay. And those are all of the skaters. Um, okay. And then we have three interleague teams, the Dirty South Derby Girls, the Rumble Bees, and the Jukes of Hazard. And those are the teams that play – outside of Atlanta that play other states, other cities in uh, in Georgia. So um, the Rumblebees and the Jukes of Hazard are our two other interleague teams, and they're going to be uh, duking it out. So we've got some out-of-town folks coming in. Yes. Okay. Um, so definitely Atlanta, come in, support the home team, get loud, be green, be safe, uh, and – Nikita, I, you said you've seen this episode, you've seen these episodes before, so you know how I am this, right? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, anymore. Wonderful, wonderful. So it's called the Golden Mike because um, of this part, the way that we end it. So I want you to imagine. Actually, let's make a mug of this next time. Okay. Um, I want you to imagine a golden microphone is in front of you. Right. Okay. And that golden microphone will translate into any every language across the world for two minutes and everyone is listening. So when I hit the switch, you have that golden microphone for two minutes. All right. Five seconds. <laughs> uh what two minutes to do, like two minutes where what am i talking about you're live you can say whatever you want to say to the world sister uh all right i think just that i'm grateful for like all of the opportunities that i've had in the last few months i think with grad school applications and with applying for my business and uh Jumping up to the A-team, I've had a lot of support, and I think that that's mostly on the people in my life, you know? Like, that's mostly on, like, all the opportunities to work with the nonprofits and stuff that I've gotten, and I think it's about um, all of the positivity that everybody at the Atlanta Roller Girls has brought me. So I think um, lately I've just come to everything with, like, a place of gratitude and a place of realizing sort of um, how humbled I am by my community and the strong people that I work with. I know it's not two minutes, but that's all I got to say about it. Hey, boom. The Atlanta Creative Loafing Athlete of the Year, when given the opportunity, talks about how her collective has built her up. Of course, that would happen when the golden mic is given to human missile crisis. Crisis, you've said it all. I hope it felt like a conversation. It was good. Yeah, I... It, it, it wasn't as uh, terrifying as I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, congratulations on everything. Um, congratulations in advance on grad school and your next steps. Say hello to the family in Atlanta. I miss everyone. Everyone, this has been episode 10. Roller Derby is wild, amazing, and um brings so many people happiness. I can only hope that you have a collective that brings you happiness and fulfillment like it does for human missile crisis and so many other people around the world. Crisis, I think we've said it all. Yeah. No, thanks, Manny. I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, you're welcome, sister. This is Manila Ice for this one time on Friday. Take care. Uh, see you Monday. <laughs>